Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we're going to talk about Gay Lussac's Law. Um, we talked about him a little bit last time with Charles. Um, he's actually given credit for um, not taking Charles Law. He uh, he did the work later, but he credited Charles for the work, even though Charles had not published his work. So he sounds like a great guy to me. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, Gay Lussac's Law is is I call it the aerosol can law. <laughs> you know, it says do not throw this aerosol can in the fire. Um, because again, all other things being equal, if you heat up the pressure of a sealed container uh, where the volume cannot change, um, then the pressure is going to go up. And that's all based on the kinetic molecular theory idea that the gases are going to start moving faster. And so they're going to start colliding with the container more and, and eventually the container will rupture if the collisions get enough to overcome the uh, structural integrity of the canister. Think of it again. Now, a balloon really covers all the gas laws. But if you inflate a balloon enough so that it no longer expands, um, you know, uh, you could then set up a, a Gay-Lussac's law by heating the balloon up. Because if the balloon can't expand anymore, um, then the pressure will go up and eventually the balloon will pop. So while the volume can change, um, that's Charles' law. But when the volume can't change anymore, then you shift to Gay-Lussac's law. So again, just think of throwing a canister into the fire. Um, don't do that, you know. But think about doing that. And again, uh, the, the the gas has nowhere to go. The, the can't can't expand, and so the container is eventually going to rupture. And so again, this is going to be a direct relationship. As one goes up, the other one goes up. As the temperature goes up, the pressure is going to go up. And so. Uh, Pretty straightforward law. So let's look at an example of Gay-Lussac's law. Hey, hey, look who's back. We haven't seen these guys in a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> let's take a look here. A gas exerts a pressure of 1.12 atmospheres at 100 Kelvin. Uh, what would the pressure become if the temperature was raised? Okay, well, again, if the temperature is being raised, we expect the pressure to go up. And since it's going up about a little over three times, then we'd expect it to go up a little over three times. But let's see. So we're going to list our relevant information, P1, P2, T1, T2. We'll write down our blank equation, P1 over T1 equals P2 over V2. Solve for the variable. Again, get in the habit of solving for the variable. It's really going to improve your math chops. So there's P2. Let's plug in our numbers. And again, we had uh, the temperatures in the right thing for this kind of conversion. And so Kelvin over Kelvin is going to cancel out. And as expected, it's going to end up multiplying out. So again, it ends up being about four atmospheres, which is what we expected. And so we're going to review some of the very early proto-gas laws that you might have learned back in like uh, elementary school. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a class. Oh, that's another good one. Oh, the, yeah, that's all three of them right there. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's look at another one here. Go ahead, pause the video. I haven't asked you to pause the video in a while, but go ahead, pause the video, work through this problem. Hey, welcome back. So let's list the information. Again, very straightforward problem. We got a temperature and a pressure and a new pressure. So what's the new temperature? Ah, but did you remember to convert your temperature to Kelvin? If you did not, then you will get this wrong. Remember that Celsius is not an absolute scale, and so changing the temperature on the Celsius scale is not really an absolute temperature change because we're not starting at zero being the coldest. And so, but if you remember to do that, it's all pretty straightforward. Now, I did round my sig figs early there. Technically, I didn't have to do that. I can wait until the end to do that. I could put in 298.15. Um, but anyway, uh, I have 1,000 times 298 over 225. Again, uh, you know, it should make sense that the temperature is going to go way up because the pressure is going up. And so that's it. That's uh, Gay-Lussac's law. Pretty straightforward. Um, we'll uh, continue on with the combined gas law, and then we'll come back and visit old friend Avogadro. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.